By the end of 2013, the name of Dragon Ball was fined in a cold uncertainty, where many did not realize the little profitability that the Dragon Ball franchise had in video games, where titles such as Raging Blast had proven to have good acceptance by the followers but not a performance that would be worth it in the long term. They needed a break, but time was running fast, and more than two years had passed without a relevant game for main consoles. At that time, a man named Kaori Ozamura and So Mayumi brought to the table a pretty risky concept, but unknowingly was exactly what the franchise needed. Deems, the developer of excellence at high-end Dragon Ball games, would then come with a new project, the 15th to be precise, and the first Dragon Ball project to arrive on Xbox One and PS4 consoles, Dragon Ball Xenoverse. After many attempts to maintain a successful formula across various formats, people were starting to get tired of the same approach but with better graphics. Even though many asked for these formulas and claimed they would never get tired of them, if anything is certain, it doesn't matter how much you like something. If that something is not stimulated, modified or adapted, you will end up getting tired of it. The Dragon Ball franchise was walking that thin line in video games, but a new idea seemed to give a new path a new beginning, something iconic. Although it was not an innovative concept for its time, it was an element that had not been explored enough in Dragon Ball games in the past, and here almost total freedom was given in that aspect. The customization is a little limited in aesthetic elements such as hair and the proportionality of the body or faces, but in the sense of the gameplay it has more depth than I expected with each race of warriors having different attributes and unique combat styles. I felt like they actually took seriously that they were striving to set up a character that makes us feel comfortable according to the tools they're giving us. After creating our character, we are ready to start our adventure. The story of Dragon Ball also taking an unexpected twist where our heroes are defeated by the villains. Now, let me explain why I find this a fascinating concept. At the beginning of this section, we mentioned how many of the fans of these games defended the formats that worked best in the golden age of the PlayStation 2, the Budokai or Budokai Tenkaichi. Well, what is the only way to change what you like so much but that change doesn't hold you back to do the same but different? The answer is make them defend what they like. History is being altered. The mission is to prevent that from happening, to stop the villains in their plan to alter the history that we want to protect. It's like a mind game. It's as if the developers wanted to hypothetically change the universe of Dragon Ball, but players actively try to avoid it. This is a pretty smart decision to avoid the typical instinct rejection of any non-canon material from an anime-based game. First, this conflict is raised and then the elements of the original script, new villains and others begin to be introduced little by little. You are practically a time patroller and you are in a base that contains the entire record of history. This is the main lobby and we can scroll to enter different game modes, but for the moment we will focus on the main story mode and the modes that complement it. It is a much wider map than I initially expected and with a decent level of detail. Although it is true that the movement animations of the characters and its surroundings could have been improved Every time you want to go on a new mission, you should talk to Trunks and he will assign it to you. Some temporary chaos that is occurring, a change in the curse of history, things like that. This will go in chronological order while we return everything to normality. This game has a lot of things. Items, rewards, missions, tracking, level bosses, cooperative missions, and all of that can be overwhelming at the beginning. You feel like you have no order, that you don't know what to do first, but this will 
to slowly make up in your head. Everything depends on the style of game you handle according to what you think is most convenient. The side missions, for example, have many things to offer. Apart from leveling up, they can give you rewards such as useful objects, items for personalization, objects to combine with each other, and the possibility of playing in a squad up to three people. This game was designed to invest a good amount of hours if you take it seriously. The technical section of the game is not bad at all, even today I see it with some bright graphics. Not perfect, but pleasant to watch. The design may not be the favorite of many, however, I feel that on a visual level it's pretty well done, including the cinematics and attack animations, which I honestly had a great time watching it. Nuances from other games were reflected in several parts, such as the fights with giant enemies which takes many well-executed elements from Battle of Z, surprisingly. Also the two-button alternative combo system of the Budokai Tenkaichi and visual styles in the cinematics that they suddenly reminded me of Burst Limit. Everything condensed forms a product not perfect but extremely entertaining. The story mode occasionally presents anime-like images to make important presentations, some events or breaking point and it seems to me a solid decision to finish polishing the narrative aspect that the in-game cinematics may not be able to transmit pretty well. In fact, you can do secondary missions either with other people online or with their avatars. You can recruit them and leave them as companions. With additions like this, they made it clear to me that they wanted to crush it with this project, making a story mode with a fairly high budget and also putting in multiplayer experience elements that could be useful in the long term if done correctly. In the secondary missions, they let you use characters other than your avatar to give it a little more variety. No matter how much you improve your character, how much you modified it as you want and everything, you will always get bored of it. That's why it's good that they let you use something else. The gameplay in Dragon Ball Universe is simple, charming, but suffers from very common brawler arena errors. The camera has some perspective problems at moments where we have to fight in close places or when we are fighting hand-to-hand -hand close to some surface. Something similar happened in the first Raging Blast, however, it is not near as uncomfortable. It feels good, with fluid mobility and few moments of disorientation. The controls are simple and direct, following the trend of casual Dragon Ball games. You have light attack, strong attack, key blast, grab, charge punch, a perfect guard mechanic, a vanish mechanic that is pretty useful to longer combos, special techniques that consume key, ultimates, and transformations that unfortunately they have a time limit. The kinesthetics in Dragon Ball when the combat is not one against one but involving many enemies or allies, everything can become a little chaotic since the hitbox can mix between two rivals. The visual white is reduced by a lot when you fight hand to hand, but it never crosses that thin line that exists between brawl and chaos. The difficulty can sometimes be very unleveled, because some are super simple, but others are extremely complicated, like surviving an infinity amount of Majin Buu's that appear one after another. I know it's not a life or death issue, but as regards the gameplay of Xenoverse, the technical section could have been polished a little more. Since the hitboxes are pretty improbable, the number of back hits that I noticed during the story was tremendous. For example, when I dodged a rival's attack and tried to counter it from behind, if the rival continued doing the combo, he hit me anyway from the back, and that really is horrible in a fighting game, it is simply unprofessional in terms of technical errors. Much of the main center of attention in the game is the online section. It allows you to do side missions with friends, level up with people from all over the world, getting rewards and being able to see the story and qualities of the people who are in the lobby. The servers were not remained that stable at the beginning, there was no need for a strong online infrastructure, but little by little they were including updates demonstrating the interest they had in preserving the activity of the community. To say that this game was not what many expected would be a total understatement. The sales numbers reflected. The servers in the first weeks of launch were down most of the time due to the huge traffic of people. This game was was doing something right. People liked it, and I can see why. In Dragon Ball Z universe, there are 58 characters, but this number is counting with the DLC characters also. Dragon Ball GT characters like Pan, Omega Shenron, and the transformations from Super Saiyan 4, as well as those belonging to the Battle of Gods and the Resurrection F films. The characters are many, 
but still, they could have had much more with the big budget that the developers put into this project. Just in a few occasions, I really had the feeling that a game provides ways to involve players as a community, encourage the sharing of information, teamwork, the curiosity of seeing how another person would handle the situation you are, and what objects would you use, their attributes, where they would go, their style, what type of equipment, their combination of skills, everything creates a great catalog of possibilities to experience. The community started to become very unique, and even though I only reached level 40 in the game, I know that for many that is still pretty low. The comparison of hours of gameplay can be abysmal and is precisely due to a feeling of appropriation with Dragon Ball, that it would start to develop and become one of the most rich content games in the history of Dragon Ball. All thanks to that idea of doing the same but different. The new dawn for Dragon Ball in video games. I thank you very much if you reach this point in the video, you really don't know how much it means. If you are interested in continuing watching videos like this, leave me in the comments what other game ideas you would like to see. Being no more, thank you so much for watching, that was all for today and I'll be watching you in the next video. Take care and see ya!